First impressions are lasting, but how do you create the kind of first impression that will level up your job search and make you ace your next interview? Our next guest has some valuable insights on the subject. She's a certified master coach and author of the groundbreaking book, Choosing Greatness. Let's welcome Christina Curtis, founder of Curtis Leadership Consulting. Christina, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so Christina, we need you to throw us a lifeline here. Bringing the right energy is crucial during an interview, which can be hard because you got a lot of nerves, you're excited, and you got to make sure you come across in the way that they want to hire you. So do you have any strategies for projecting a confident and positive vibe that leaves a lasting impression on the interviewer? I sure do. And it's really interesting because a lot of interviews are being done via Zoom these days or Teams. And so you have to transmit energy through a screen, which is a whole other added complexity uh, that we didn't have to take into account, at least when I was uh, looking for my last job. And so it's important to be able to project the energy you want the other person to feel. It's so contagious. Energy can transfer between two people without someone even saying a word. And so bring energy into your screen, bring it into the interview. Uh, it's the number one tip I would say in, or, in terms of getting a job. Yeah, so how can candidates also go beyond small talk? I mean, it's good to find things that you can relate to with the employer on, but we wanna create those meaningful conversations that establish rapport and builds that trust. Yeah, there was a great study out of Northwestern University around likability and that likability is a critical factor in someone's hiring decision. And so to rapidly build a bond with someone, ask meaningful questions and share something meaningful about yourself beyond the weekend plans and the weather. Small talk leads to small wins, right? So if you can think about something that actually gets them thinking and remembering uh, a particular piece about you, you're likely to build trust and have them think about you long after you've left the room. Yeah, we want to make sure we stand out. And we live in the world of the 140 word tweet. We're trying to get things done quick and concise. So why is it important to condense our message down to sound bites? And how can doing so help us in the interview process? Yeah, synthesizing your strengths in the sound bites is critical because we often speak in paragraphs, but people don't retain information if there's a lot of context there. So get your three or four strengths, put them into 25 words or less, and remember to get to them quickly and succinctly so you're crisp and they can retain it long after you've gone. Oh man, that's gonna be a hard one for me because I like to chat a lot, but that's good to know. Keep it short and concise so that they can remember you. The interview process can also kind of get on our nerves, like literally it can be nerve wracking to do. So can you share some yeah. insights on how to overcome nervousness and keep a cool head, which is hard. Yeah. Yeah, the, the biggest takeaway I give to people is remember it's a conversation, not a presentation. So how can you engage in the space between the two of you rather than presenting to a screen and trying to come off as perfect? People don't hire perfect. People don't say, hey, they hit every question beautifully. If they do, they say, I wonder what we're missing. I want to see a whole person. I want it to be authentic. So not a presentation, but a conversation. And then your nerves will slowly melt away because you're used to talking to people and, and being yourself. Um, that's a great place to be when you're in an interview. Oh, that's such a key point to remember. Not perfection, a conversation. And in your book, Choosing Greatness, you discuss an evidence-based approach to achieving exceptional outcomes. Can you talk about what that means and how we can leverage that for success? Right, well, we operate on 42% of our day on autopilot. We just repeat behaviors and habits we've done before. And choosing greatness, I interview people like Richard Branson and Lara American, the founder of Larabar, to say, what are the daily choices? What are the choices we need to be making to get off autopilot and engage with the day differently so we get different results? And it's evidence-based. I bring the science and background in terms of how to achieve exceptional outcomes, which includes happiness, I don't think money is very meaningful without happiness and um, you can pick it up at Barnes and Noble or Amazon. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to not choose greatness? I mean, the title itself has me intrigued. And with your expertise in motivation and goal attainment, what advice do you have for candidates to maintain a positive mindset throughout the interview process and staying focused on their objectives? Because, you know, we could be talking and we got a million and one things going through our head. We're trying to think of what to say next, but how can we stay focused and get our message across correctly? Yeah, the most important thing is remember that setbacks are part of any goal process. And so whether you're interviewing or going after a project or trying to achieve something great at work, you're going to have setbacks. And I actually uh, love the saying that I hear a lot with my senior clients, which is turbulence is part of the job. 
It's going to come. <laughs> and so if you expect it, then when it hits you, it's not like, gosh, I hit a dead end. It's just, oh, it's a sharp turn. I can keep going. I'm going to continue on because I expected this. It's part of the process. So remember, expect setbacks. They are part of the growth opportunity as you go after your next job. I like that. Us working in television, we definitely understand that. I have a director, Steve Cornelius, <laughs> who would always tell me, as long as the plane lands, you did it. So <laughs> there's always going to be a little turbulence in between. But as long as we get there, the destination, totally. we're good to go. And my last question for you, as a woman navigating the working world, I understand the yeah. importance of setting goals. From your experience, what specific strategies or tips do you recommend for women to stay focused on our objectives during the interview process? Well, from a research standpoint, I will tell you, women tend to uh, negate their own goals before they've even gone after them and make and play a little smaller. We get more apprehensive about how good we are, how likable we are, how sellable, how marketable we are. And the reality is, if you set your mind to it, I strongly believe that you can get there. And if you don't know how, you can find someone who does. So play big, play for what you want, play for what will get you out of bed in the morning and feel energized. And it may take a year, it may take six months, it may take a week, but at least you're aiming for what actually will bring you fulfillment versus what will be meh, just okay. Yeah, we don't want me. okay, we want greatness. We're gonna choose greatness. Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. And you can find out about the leadership coaching Christina does by going to curtisleadership.com.